Without delay, please let me introduce to the stage the one you've all been waiting to see. Alicia Devon Kelly! like yesterday, you guys are going to stand in line, maybe 10 people at a time, uh, and wait for your turn. Um, but first, there was one question yesterday that, that kind of stuck with me, and it was a very simple question, actually. It was, which Taylor Swift song? <laughs> and, uh, and it kind of made me wonder, what, what kind of music do you like? Um, so I really like, I mean, I like a lot of music. Um, uh, my dad was a musician, so uh, that, I grew up with a lot of different kind of music. But my kind of style is I love old, um, like uh, blues and R&B and jazz. Like I love um, uh, Anna James and and Aretha Franklin and Marvin Gaye and, yeah. and yeah, like that's kind of my style. Like, that's what I love. Uh, I love my very best like, Steely Dan, which no one in here probably knows. Oh yeah, about. yeah, we know. But no if you're over the age of 45, you probably know. <laughs> not 45, no. You and I are in the minority. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm into a lot more of the old old school stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's where I, what I like. But then I can totally get down with a little bit of drink here and there. Yeah, okay. That's great, that's great, that's wonderful. Um, so I also wanted to ask you guys out there, how many of you consider Alicia here like a positive role model? <laughs> There you go, there you go. See, I've been thinking, you know, how important do you think like role models are, like positive role models are in like today's movies and TV shows and things like that? How do you feel about this? Um, role model is, I mean, it's a, a term you grow up with when you're so young. And I definitely had the role, role models when I was a kid, and, and I know how important they are, obviously. And uh, I think, they are so important. I, I, they set great values, and, and um, what they do obviously informs what a lot of people feel or relate to. And it's hard though now because anything can be a, any everything and anything is recorded now, and so things that you don't necessarily mean for, to be uh, um, recorded or, or taken out of context can then be transferred as what a role model should be or shouldn't be when it's it's hard to I feel like the lines of uh, where a role model is now is blurry or in a gray zone I feel like now there's a lot more pressure on people of what should be a role model or what is classified as that especially with the laws of privacy changing and, and um, just technology it's 
changed a lot from when I was young. Uh, like role models for me were like, you know, like they do a, like it was like a pop star that did a performance and then that's what you saw and then maybe you saw like an interview or something and it was the best thing ever. Now everything is online and every little detail is accounted for. So it's very, especially being in the position I'm in now, it's a, it's hard to manage what you give out and don't give out so that you're not misinterpreted, if you know what I mean. I'm getting really serious with you all here. But I think it's also important because it, it is not to be taken for granted, uh, you know, someone's intentions or, you know what I mean? I, I, it's complicated, but yeah, role models, interesting title now. It's yeah. not the same as it was. And I think people still have that original idea of what a role model is, and especially with girls young, like the females now, uh, female role models are taking a much bigger stand. You know, you have these awesome ladies on screen and TV uh, who are finally being represented in, in like a starring role and that's fantastic for young girls, but then it's also like, where are the lines there? And, and what does that mean without changing technology and changing values and, and liberation and, you know, sexual orientation or whatever it is, it's very, uh, multifaceted and so which is fantastic but it's also I mean I love that there's that joke on the internet where it's like trying to make a joke in 2017 is that little image of a kid trying to uh, get, make his way through uh, laser beams have you seen that <laughs> anyway it was funny <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that so anyway that's my point of view <laughs> okay I don't know why you can use any of that. I, I, I have to find it now, uh, obviously. So, okay, guys. walked onto the set, they started playing Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. <laughs> we just started, like, I couldn't stop laughing. I was on the ground, I was like, no, don't. <laughs> it's too hard, I was, it's just gonna take all day. <laughs> so yeah, that was probably one of the, definitely a strong memory in my mind. <laughs> Apart from the death yeah. scene? Apart from that, what was the most heartbreaking? For heartbreaking? You? Uh, for you and for Alexa. For me? Yeah. And for Alexa? Uh, well, I mean, the heartbreaking one was the death scene. There was nothing that can, like, was even close. Like, if I went, that's what it was. Um, but it was hard to shoot or something. Hard to shoot? Yeah. There was a couple of scenes. Anything where we had, like, a lot of. Um, extras or horses on set, which were a few times we had some, or even if it would be like a 12 hour night shoot and it would be in the rain from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., like that's a really tough, tough shooting day because then your body clock's completely out and we'll have like five horses and 100 extras with wielding weapons and that, that can then uh, be a little tricky to keep the momentum up and the energy, um, but it's also, you know, no one gets to do stuff like that, so it's really fun. Well, you know what? I, it's really not. It, this is it's it's difficult. I mean, if it's it depends on so many different things. Like if it was just any kind of situation where it's like, oh, the character can keep on living and well, then there's no reason to like why not then keep up this great character alive. However, it had nothing to do with like you know the story. A lot of this was. Um, scheduling conflicts and my work life and and the way of and the writers on the show I mean that's their their job and everything that they did was really just out of creative interest it wasn't 
anything to be hurtful for anyone and they did not mean it to be hurtful. I'm sorry that a lot of you felt that way. Like no one, it's, it's awful to know um, how heartbreaking it is uh, and for people to feel like that. So it definitely wasn't intended to be that. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of hard. I'm not a writer myself, so I feel like I, I feel confident knowing that it's the writers are also talented on our show. I think that's also one of the reasons why this show has done so well and why it's like amassed such an incredible, passionate group of people because it was written so well. We've got such a great um, cast, and it's 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 hard. It saddens me almost to know that this was such an event that tarnished uh, the show, um, especially for such an important you know uh, group of people. And and so. I mean, I like knowing that, you know, it wasn't about the creativity behind uh, the, yeah, it was just a creative thing. Um, so yeah, okay. that's kind of like my whole way to that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like Alicia Clark would offer up some sass to Alexa. <laughs> and be like, like, you don't want me around. And then I feel like Alicia Clark would be more of like an Octavia towards Alexa, if that makes sense. Um, but no, I don't think they would. <laughs> I know that many people get along with Alexa, if you know what I mean. <laughs> She's not that forgiving. <laughs> The gaining weight and losing weight thing, to be honest, that seems really, really intense. Uh, but in terms of like cutting my hair or something like that, if I really, really loved the role, yeah, I could wear it for sure. There was a year where I, I first moved up to LA when I was 18, and I worked really quickly and really solidly for a year. I kind of booked job after job and it went really smoothly for me and I kind of made a, a lot of you know friends quite quickly and I bounced around from house to house, you know, staying in different areas and then finally for my second year I decided I'm gonna stay and live here and I didn't book a, a job for the entire year. And I came close to a lot of things but it was a really trying and testing time because it tested a lot of my uh, belief in myself or how, you know, if, if I should be staying out there and uh, it was really hard. Los Angeles is not the most um, easy city sometimes uh, because the industry can be a little unforgiving. So that was probably one of the hardest points. In life. In life, yeah. That's our question. That's deep. That's deep. Um, in life, to be honest, I take a lot of my role models. I mean, my parents are, are two people that obviously I've always looked up to in the way that they raised me and, and my brother and um, and everything that they've done for us. Uh, but in terms of exterior of people, I I look up to a lot of um, people that hunt in my field, to be honest. Like, I love, uh, I, I appreciate, I guess, leaders and um, like scientists and, and uh, medical professionals. Like, I, that's kind of, I, I take a lot of inspiration from that, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My guilty bread was bread um, uh, and uh, trashy TV. Look, I'm not gonna lie, I watch the, you know, the Kardashians every now and then if I'm really want to zone out. That's probably the two of them I'd say. <laughs> Mindless, that's where it's at. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Don't make me choose. <laughs> uh, it changes all the time, changes day to day, depending on how I feel. But if I if I could really work with anyone at this point, oh maybe it would be 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it would be like De Niro, but then like Kate Blanchett for Baby George Clooney. Or, <laughs> or <laughs> maybe Julia Roberts. Or maybe <laughs>
it hasn't been established yet, but I'm excited to see if uh, Madison and Alicia's relationship will either rise to a very similar place and they'll support each other, or if they'll actually end up breaking away because um, of their differences and her innate um, kind of capacity to to uh, always be searching for Nick. When we first started with Alicia, she appeared quite um, tough and kind of a little bit of a kid with some rough edges that was from a more of a, a rougher neighborhood. I guess growing up with a, a drug addicted brother and a mother that was sort of, you know, there but not totally there and, and a father that just wasn't. And I think what I initially defined her was this toughness that she had, but What's interesting, and then, and especially in the first like season and half of season two, um, this ability for her to have that kind of um, nonchalant sassiness and um, and naivety. I think she's obviously she's quite a smart girl, but she has that sort of chip on her shoulder um, over over reluctance because she's always had to prove herself. So around her family, there's sort of like a a reluctance to do so. Um, but now seeing her grow, it's been nice to see her be a teenager and then make the mistakes to finally become being someone in her own right of leadership and and discovering her own self to kind of by herself. Uh, so it's been nice to see her really go from being a teenager into a young woman and, and that's something we're gonna continue to see, hopefully. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thanks. Um, I'd like to ask, well first I'd like to say thank you for empowering and inspiring LGBTQ youth. Um, I love you guys. Look at you guys. No one's coming out for it. Oh, great. That really means a lot and women in general. But um, I'd like to ask what motivates you to stay in this business because it can be really tough for a woman. Um, the motivation for me has always been the same. It's just that I love doing this and it's unfortunate that there are ulterior things and exterior uh, problems that have nothing to do with you that get in the way. But that's never been my sole focus. I don't do this job because I, I want like a relationship with fame or money. It's so never been about that for me and it will not be about that for me. I do this because I love doing it. And I always only ever hope to work with really great people and be inspired by them. Uh, and I think that's really the only reason for doing something like this, because the rest of it's just like spirits. I mean, it's not real, really. It is, but it's it's all from like the the difference between being there where you guys are and being up here. It's it's very misleading in many ways. Um, and but it's it's nice to be a part of a a generation where women are seeing uh, like a lot more representation on screen and. And finally, we're seeing a kind of a more equilibrium. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to say some words. Can you repeat it for Russian friends? I will try. My God. <laughs> say Yoha. Yoha. Wait, what am I saying? Yoha. Repeat again. Yoha. What does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, it's mean um, Lexa forever. Some kind of. Oh, Lexa forever. Your word. Lexa. So sorry. Right, I think the, the construct of a family is definitely changing from Alicia's point of view. I think Alicia didn't necessarily grow up with a typical family unit. I mean, having like a single parent and um, a brother that's not always there. So for her, I think she's a little bit more adapted to having just 
a relationship with whatever family then is around. And I think what's interesting about especially The Walking Dead in Fear is having started out with seeing a family in fear and seeing how like separated we've become, whereas in The Walking Dead, seeing these strangers become a family. And I think that's a different kind of uh, um, like scale that we're going to see sort of tip between the two. You know what I mean? Like Fear the Walking Dead is, we've got these um, families that now they're going to be find a family within strangers, I guess. Um, and especially, especially like Alicia's grouping right now with Madison Strand and well, Ophelia as of, re of recently. The I think it's just about now choosing your family. You're not necessarily um, a, a lot of our yeah. It's not that blood is stronger than bond. Yeah, so that's definitely something we, we are exploring. Thank you so much. I was so excited to be working with her again. Brenda is such an incredible actress, and uh, she's so professional and so good at what she does, and it's it was such an honor to work with her in the 100, and then to be able to work with her again in Fear. Uh, I was only just disappointed that I couldn't get to work with her as much as I wanted to. Um, on Fia because she is so fantastic and great to work with. Uh, yeah, definitely there are a lot. Um, I can't really think of them now. Um, just a lot of like anything that has a sentence where there are like you like R's in it, heavy R's in a lot of them. I found hard, but to be honest, I a lot of my professional work that I've done in the last five years, it's all been in an American accent. Like, I haven't worked in anything in Australia since, yeah, I, I left, really. So I'm, I'm more used to speaking in an American accent in the film than I am actually back home. Yeah, because I, I think there's like a one slip up back in season one of Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, no. <laughs> like a police here. <laughs> what was my slip up? It was, it was a scene with Nick when he was uh, during, during his withdrawal or something, and um, yeah, a bit Australian came up. I mean, nobody's perfect, <laughs> but we do try. No, we. The hard thing about that show, especially, is that there are very few Americans. Um, Frank is English. Cliff is from New Zealand. Uh, um, um, Ruben's from Panama. Um, uh, uh, Mercedes was originally born in Sweden and then moved to America. And so really the only Americans are Lorenzo, Kim, and Colin. So it's, it has been, a, it was a little trying at the start because we, I was always acting in scenes opposite people that weren't American. So we were all putting on American accents and then in our breaks we'd go off and talk in, you know, normally. So it gets very confusing. But yeah, thanks for pointing out. I'll know for the next time. be cool to see like a like a fall from power or something and then to start like a a coup and then regain power. I don't know. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> what about uh, for her and Clark? Oh that's all up to you guys, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, the most challenging scene to shoot um, from Fear is in this night's episode. Um, it's a long, maybe four or five minute talking scene, and it's a very emotional scene, and it was definitely one of the hardest things to do, especially because we had to ADR a lot of it um, in post. Uh, so, but I'm, I, I don't know how it turned out. I hope it turned out okay. Uh, that was definitely one of the so you should check out. And then <laughs> for the hundred, um, one of the, the, the 100, there were two things. There was one scene where I had to do this huge speech in the throne room with all this added um, grounder language, and I was having just a mental blank that day where I just could not get it. And they ended up cutting a lot of it out, I think, because I got it wrong. Because <laughs> I was just like, I'm so sorry. And it was also so much of it. Usually they give us chunks of, of grounder language, and then they realize as we're feeling like, this is so boring, like no one's listening. <laughs> so they'll just like cut it out. Uh, and then um, 
there was another one. It was, it's a scene where uh, a liar, a Clark and Lex are in the tent, and it's the first time when, when Clark approaches her for uh, uh, she attacks her by saying you were going to kill Octavia, um, and that was one of the hardest scenes be just because I think there was a lot of dialogue and we we were both wanting to get it really right, but then it ended up being one of my favorite scenes to shoot. Thank you. And first I want to thank you for being so professional and dedicated and kind towards your fans and not least to say in your work, it's incredible to see you. quite different. I think I prepare for them differently. Um, but yeah, so it, a lot of it has to do with the character itself. But for me, just it's a lot of, um, I just like to go through all, if I can, like going through the scenes, for me, that's just like one of the main rituals. Like really, like I usually will learn things quite ahead of time so that I can really, like that part of it's done and then I can just start to, um, go through it bit by bit and, and really have the attention on each moment. And not because I learned that from a drama school or anything, because I didn't, I didn't do that, but uh, I, I guess it's just me trying to understand it and get to a place where when you get on set, then you just forget about it. So you kind of just done the work. I guess preparation, really, and just try, knowing that it's in you enough to then trust it and let it go. Definitely normal person in comparison to Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the main thing there. Um, do I uh, have in many qualities? Yeah, definitely. Um, similar qualities. I. I can. I mean, yes. Like, I mean, it, the, I mean, not to mention the name. Like that was probably crazy. Um, but yeah, I think we can both be. Um, I think she tends to like to uh, have her own space, and I'm quite like that. And she's um, kind of, I, I think, deep down a little bit of a, like, a little bit of a geek. I think I am here too. And, but yeah, I think she has an inner strength, and I like to think that <coughs> I have that as well. Without seeing Thank you. So. <laughs> Um, I think she definitely has a lot less of that. Uh, I think Chris is a very, I mean, that's someone who's really spinning out of control. Whereas Alicia, her, she's always had that um, fractured relationship with her family. So I think for her, a lot of it is trying to keep things together. I think she's got a lot more of Madison in her. She's really Madison's daughter that need to stick together and um, and, uh, and and not like Ophelia by abandoning. I don't think she's one of those, has those characteristics, but I think she's got a lot more of a rational perspective that it's not, if someone chooses to leave, well, they're choosing that, and that's their decision. And I think that's one of the biggest hangups she has with Madison is that although Nick chose to leave, she's still trying to look for him, and he's done it multiple times before, and this time it was really final. And so I think she's really um, reacting against um, that characteristic in her mother. Um, about space? Yeah. Maybe black holes. I had a bit of fascination with that for a while. Um, I think it would be like, uh, right now I'm. I mean, right now I'm probably like maybe poached eggs on toast with avocado and a side of spinach and mushrooms. 
I like breakfast a lot. <laughs> but I also like blue ribbon pancakes, but I get sick of that. And then I like fries and steak, but then I probably get sick of that as well. So I think my answer is the first one. <laughs> Uh, no, I can definitely take myself out of it. Uh, for a, a little bit, I, there, were, there are times when I'll watch something and I'll go, oh, that was 80 yard, or hmm, post. But <laughs> like, now it's a lot, uh, now I'm easily just, I can appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. Okay, you can switch off. Yeah, okay. I can, yeah. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Have I ever? I haven't read any. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of illustrations. <laughs> okay. But I haven't really. Uh, no, I haven't because. Uh, yeah. I, just, I I, I know that it's definitely out there, but I haven't actively, you know, looked for it. <laughs> um, uh, Richard Harmon. Okay. Yeah. I would have loved to work with him more. I think his character Murphy is so great, and I think Alexa and Murphy is such an interesting, that could be, could have been really interesting. To see if, like, you know, he maybe almost side with her, or like, you know, I guess like that I think could have been a really uh, interesting thing. But he's also just such a great guy. Also, Lindsay is re really great too. Really great too. So, so yeah, like, Raven and Lexus, that could have been really interesting too. Oh, I, I don't watch things with my friends or family. I'd rather not watch it with them. Um, but uh, I, I watch things, I definitely will watch it once to just see how it goes, but I, def I don't go back and like watch things again because I feel like for me, it's, um, most of it isn't, not that it's uncomfortable, I mean it is a little bit uncomfortable, but I, for me I always watch it and there's always something wrong that I didn't like or it's not better or I'm d distracted. It's very different watching yourself um, because you're so aware of what's going on. Uh, so I usually will watch things once, see what I feel about it, see if I can have a, um, a sort of unbiased perspective, and then improve it or grow from it or, uh, yeah, learn from it a little bit. I don't take it too seriously, obviously, but it's not something I enjoy doing, like, oh, I'm going to watch myself now. <laughs> So my question is, would you rather fight uh, one horse-sized duck or 100 uh, duck-sized horses? Wait, horses? So, uh, one, so one uh, horse-sized oh, duck. horses? Yeah. Or, one duck-sized horse yeah. or a hundred... Duck-sized horses. <laughs> so, so one horse-sized duck? Duck-sized, the, ho the duck-sized horse. A <laughs> hundred of the... A big duck? Okay. Yeah, duck. or a yeah. hundred little, little horses. Or a hundred little horses? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the other way around seems fun. Uh, uh, <laughs> fight them? Doc, I feel like that might be a little <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>